I'm really short. You are really short. What's going on with that? I'm going to go ahead and get this get straightened out here. <laughs> I'm standing as tall as I can. Should we maybe switch sides here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, much better. There we go. That's a little more reasonable. <laughs> so it's morning time and today we're leaving uh, Isle of Skye area and we're driving all the way across the country from Isle of Skye <laughs> to Aberdeen. Which is really only a couple of hours drive, but yeah, we're gonna stop in the middle, right? Like three hours mm. across, and we're stopping in the middle at? Loch Ness. Loch Ness. We're gonna find us a Nessie, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> and thus far, we haven't really found much as we're driving, except we did see a really cool castle, but uh, it was all rainy and stuff, so. <laughs> Rain will stop you. <laughs> However, this little lake is pretty wonderful and it's yeah. been raining a little so the, the, the sun coming through the clouds is pretty epic looking. Mm. We made it to uh, Loch Ness, or at least we're near Loch Ness. We've seen I, signs everywhere. I haven't everywhere. seen the water yet. I haven't seen water and I ain't seen no dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we were told that we could find Nessie somewhere here. And we're going to be on the hunt for a little while and see if we can find her at a special place that we've been told is pretty interesting. I think we found Nessie <laughs> and her nesticles. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> so it turns out that we actually drove along the edge of Lake Ness or Loch Ness. <laughs> At least a mile or so. For quite a ways, like looking at it being like, oh, there's a lock, there's a lake, whatever. And like, we didn't really think anything of it before we got to the little town where there's signs everywhere that says that you're in the Loch Ness area. So we've turned back around and we've headed back down the same way that we had come. And uh, this time we hopped out and we came down to actually see the lock up close because the road is a little bit higher up than the level of the lake. So we've climbed down this cute little path and now we have actually come and we've actually gotten to actually see it. And now we're actually looking for the actual real Nessie instead of that freak ass Nessie and her nesticles that we ran across. Yeah, <laughs> that was really creepy. It was a weird looking guy. Uh, so far we haven't found anything interesting, but uh, the lake is super duper long. I didn't realize this. Like you think of like a lake or something and you think it's circular, but this is like, a very very long lake so we're going to drive i think the distance around it and uh, keep our eyes peeled out and maybe we'll find some real dinosaurs what or we won't i'm what? pretty sure we'll find lunch <laughs> i think we're here for lunch do you think nessie's on the menu i'd eat nessie would yeah you would check that off your list yeah <laughs> gotta get the meat book we're talking about the meat i need a meat book and then every page has a different animal that's like all cartoony and then you just check off what you ate sorry vegetarians but this is the meat book i'd also do the veggie book don't think i'd count you out but <laughs> i do my meat book and my veggie book and my grain book and yeah. she'd be able to check off pigeon if you remember that part <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've come down to the southern tip of Loch Ness and Katie managed to find something pretty cool on Google's map feature. And that Google's is- Google's map feature. <laughs> <laughs> that is a little restaurant that sits directly on the lake. And uh, it's kind of tucked away. We didn't yeah. think we were allowed to come back here. I had to call, I go up to like a buzzer box and push a button, and then it, yeah, so we didn't think we were able to come back here, but it we're it back here. Yeah. And I expected it to be like, oh, it's right on the lake, it's gonna be really expensive, yeah. and it's really not. Like, we they have lunch meals for like seven or eight pounds, so we are not having a very expensive lunch. But check out this view. <laughs> You're doing a good job checking it out. I really am. Oh, I was looking for baby Loch Ness. <laughs> there was a duck a minute ago. Yeah, there was a duck it's in baby it. Loch Ness. Baby Loch Ness. <laughs> and, and I think Nessie ate her. Oh, it's possible. Yeah. Maybe it's just another nesticle. Yep, she's just having tons of them. They're <laughs> everywhere. That's where ducks came from. All of them? Yep, all of them. The world. Oh! <laughs> yeah. I just found out why this food was so cheap. You're not paying for the food at all. I've got a chicken thing and uh, try to just focus on the view is what I'm gonna do here. This morning we went to a little tourist information booth and uh, the lady had mentioned that one of the prominent features of the Loch Ness area is that little town of Fort Augustus where we happened to find a place that we could eat out on the water. And part of the things that they have there is a series of locks 
that connect a little canal into the lock of Loch Ness. So you've got locks for a boat, like to raise the levels of the water, going into a lock, which is a lake, called Ness. I think I've got all that straightened out. There's a lot of locks going on though. And uh, I was thinking this would be a good place if they had those little locks that you could put on a, you know, you're supposed to lock, lock a love heart or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, lock like, a lock, lock on a the lock. Lock on the lock, lock. into the lock. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it looks really nice up here. They've kept it like quite nice. Like, uh, what's it when you keep a garden? Like uh, not uh, gradiented, but tidy. Uh, tidy. Yeah, okay, we'll go with tidy. Go with tidy. Yeah, they've got a like a, a well groom, manicured. Groom, groom. Well manicured. Well manicured. Well. Yeah, well manicured or groomed. These groom, these groomed greens <laughs> at the lock before the lock. <laughs> They're very nice. <laughs> and this area is super touristy. There's a lot of things that are touristy, but I feel like this little area, like on this little town, feels kind of like quaint and actually pretty. It doesn't feel gaudy like a lot of the touristy stuff. The lady at the tourist center feel. said this. This is a wee village. Oh, is that what you referred to? Wee village? Yes, we're oh, we'll the go with the wee village. Wee village with the locks going into the lock. Eric, Eric, this is, uh, this is play green. Are you ready? What's play green mean? Play green means you run. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you run like Mario with your arms out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like when lampposts ask me questions and they don't provide me the answers. You think the answer's on the back. It's not. It's not on the back. So now all it has done is made me want to use my data to go onto Google and find out how long this canal is. Why is it instigating stuff? Couldn't this lamp, it could have just left it alone. <laughs> Leave it alone, lamp. <laughs> if you've ever been curious to know what does it look like around Loch Ness, it looks pretty awesome. I'd almost say that the landscape around it is more impressive than the lake itself. <laughs> This is the fourth rainbow I've seen in 24 hours. Loch Ness kind of ended up like everybody said it would. Yeah. But it, it, the, people had said that it was really fairly touristed. And I kind of feel no, like there wasn't were so much. people there, but uh, that it didn't seem like a tourist trap to me. Mm. There wasn't a whole lot of like stands set up and things like that. I thought it was really going to be a barrage. Yeah, I thought come. it would be super gaudy. Yeah. Uh, the, other thing, the other thing I heard a lot of is that there's better places to go see lakes. And there probably are, but this one's cool because it's Loch Ness. Yeah. And I thought that the area around the lock was really cool and really pretty. And it's fun because it's a really long lake, so you get to drive around it and it takes a while like an hour and a half or something like that so mm -hmm. i mean it's got it's totally i'm glad we stopped it was on the way basically through where we were headed yep. and like that got rooted out pretty good on and the way to aberdeen. aberdeen and the reason we're going to aberdeen is mostly because of the character johnson from peep show aberdeen and he always says aberdeen like that he's like aberdeen or something yeah so like we got this stuck in our head and we're like oh there's aberdeen so now we're going now we're going that's really the whole that, reason that is the only reason oh well i also read about things called butteries okay. or rowies so maybe and that's the, food? i think they're the same thing and um we're gonna try them one morning cool but i mean like we're gonna go check other things out of course but the reason that it was on our map was because of peep show Ooh, but right now we are in a big uh, national park national park mm. the sun is setting and we are heading towards cock bridge and hopefully <laughs> hopefully it's not too dark when we get to the cock bridge and we can really see it in all its all its beauty <laughs> Yeah. Nice cock. <laughs> nice cock. <laughs> it's a nice cock. Something I think is funny about this too is that it's very obvious that there's been like a million people <laughs> that have stopped here because of this sign. <laughs> so they need to put like a parking area. <laughs> get some like oblique workout not obliques but whatever the middle is you could get that workout Woo! I got the goods run <laughs> When I was looking up the types of foods that you should try while you're in Scotland I saw the word buttery and I was like there's no word after it buttery is the descript is an adjective <laughs> <laughs> but no, it is a noun, and that noun is for a pastry that's made in Aberdeen, Aberdeen, where we are right now. And um, so I just looked up, like, where's the best place to go and get this, and uh, 
This right here is an award-winning buttery, also known as a Rowie, and I like Rowie a little bit better. So when I ordered it, I ordered a Rowie. Um, when we came to the place where we ordered it, it's Byron's Bakery or Byron Bakery. It doesn't really make sense where you're going. You're, you're not driving up to your typical kind of bakery. It's, it's almost more like a delicatessen or a butcher shop, it feels like. It's very small and people are there that... I can't believe they're there for just bakery stuff. It seems a little strange, but there's a pretty big line of just regular us people. And uh, it's kind of in a little bit of a neighborhood in a strip mall that isn't anything impeccable at all. But award-winning pastries. So I'm not really exactly sure what a rowie is, but people on the internet fight about whether it's made with lard. And they just, <laughs> they just fight and fight and fight. And then somebody says, I saw him making one. I'm never going to eat it. Wait, this is a secret? People I don't, don't know I don't, what it's made I don't out know. of? <laughs> people just are arguing about it. Is it it's, it's called a buttery, so people I assume think it's made with butter, and then everybody's like, no, it's made with lard, and then there's a big argument about it. But you know what? I'm just hoping it tastes good, that's all. Who's not eating lard? Oh, I mean, it looks like you might be eating oh, lard, but we're damn. not sure. Is it warm? No, it doesn't need to be. <laughs> um, it's definitely got like a buttery flavor. It is quite salty. And people were comparing it to a croissant. It's almost like they took a croissant and they just flattened it. You remember when you took that um, tea cake and you squished it in your <laughs> pocket? It's like that. <laughs> um, it, it, it's good. I, I definitely do like it. I would get another. Um, but we ended up getting a bunch of other stuff. Well, hold, hold on, hold on. Um, is this thing flaky? A bit flaky, yeah. Can I have some? No. <laughs> Come this on, is man. my breakfast. Here. You had cornflakes and stuff. I was like, I'm getting a rally. You gotta have a banana and some cornflakes. What, what? All right. No, you're right. It's really like a croissant that's been flattened. If it's made of lard, there's some like oiliness or something. And maybe that's what it is, or maybe that's just butter. There is definitely something a little bit suspicious about it, but it's pretty damn delicious. Um, it's really dense in a way that I didn't expect, and it just feels like, you're right, it feels like you squished a croissant, like rolled it over with a steamroller, and just flattened that out. It's pretty dang good. It didn't cost very much either. It was like basically free, which is what you expect from little places like that. I mean, in, in the scheme of cost, so we got that Rowie, which I probably would have paid two pounds for the experience <laughs> I, I would say i want to i want to try an award-winning pastry i'm willing to give two pounds on that but that had to be like Less super cheap because for two pounds 15 pence we got the rowey this other award-winning cake which i'm about to eat a bite of and then we also got this extreme hot dog of of an eclair. It's <laughs> so big, dude. It is so, she had to get a secondary box out <laughs> for this one. Um, so, and that was two fifteen. Those were the suggestions of the like, girl. Like total, there. right? The yes, price, yeah, yeah, total. When she said that, I was like, okay, you and just so take the money. This thing is called a what? A Caramac. And she said it was award-winning as well, yeah. yeah? And it looks like it's gonna be hard, but I'm pinching it a little bit and it's not that hard. I'm expecting a very strong caramel thing. I'm expecting friggin' heaven, man. It looks like it's gonna be turbo, turbo sweet. <laughs> you got quiet. <laughs> I felt like I had a... Sometimes you gotta breathe out the flavor to really get it. It tastes a bit like, um, it's something to do with Easter, like, um. Peeps? It, it tastes like peeps? It doesn't taste like peeps. Oh, it, it tastes like, um, there, there's a certain type of, um, candy for you. You might be able to help me. You're gonna have to try that. Okay. But it's the caramel version of this Easter thing that's in my mind. It's pretty strong smelling, like the caramel is pretty overwhelming. In a good way, I mean caramel. <laughs> overwhelming, not in a bad way. 
Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's freaking good. That's award-winning, dude. Dude. It's like a cake inside, and the cake is quite moist. And the whole thing just feels like they just injected it with pockets of caramel. There is something familiar about it, and you say Easter, that kind of makes sense. I, I, I can't... <laughs> I can't really pin down. <laughs> You're right. There's something very familiar about this. Yeah, it's something about the texture. It's like a, not a plasticiness, but it's that. Yeah. And when you're right, and when you breathe out, you get like an injection of loveliness. <laughs> that thing's amazing. The butter is I. This thing is like. This thing's dropping my panties. Like, let's just, <laughs> let's just roll that out there. You want me to, I'm gonna bite into this eclair too. Oh, yeah. She opened this eclair box and I was just like, that's a lot of eclair, y'all. <laughs> like, she opened it, she goes, holy shit. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> just a bit. Um, I kind of like eclairs. I'm not like a connoisseur of them or anything, but I'm a fan. You did like a special hot dog. Oh, like. Bite the middle. Like this. <laughs> That's how people eat hot dogs nowadays. People call it hot dog sandwiches, so you should eat them like that. This is okay. The chocolate, I mean, it's- a, After, after the other one? After the other thing, this is, this is bullshit. But it's, it's pretty, it's pretty good for an eclair. It's like one of the best eclairs I think I can have, have ever had. Um, it's got a good chocolate. The cream is not super, super sweet. Um, and I think that's good because the chocolate is pretty sweet. And the bread on this is- noteworthy it's just got a good texture and everything but like an eclair bread it doesn't have a whole lot of um a whole lot of flavor i got like i'm a you look good <laughs> do i look good yeah <laughs> look fed <laughs> look fed <laughs> jeez <laughs> I didn't even want to put my phone that close to my face, but yet. <laughs> Sorry, that's not so good. Maybe, like this. maybe, maybe, maybe your maybe. depth perception is <laughs> off because you're just staring at the camera. But the, my depth perception, that was almost in my eye. I'm glad I was wearing protective lenses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anywho, so I did a little research. This is the texture. It is these um, marshmallow eggs mm -hmm. from Easter. The texture is the outer part of it. It, it just has that, that encapsulatingness to it. There's and something about it kind the of just crumbles and it's really sweet. Yeah. Um, but the caramel version of that with no marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> do, those, do you think, that, have you seen those things in the UK? Because I want some. <laughs> No, I haven't seen them. Well, I haven't really been looking at the Easter candy because I kind of just turn off Easter. Once yeah. I see giant bunnies everywhere, I just go, meh. Animated bunnies. I should say animated bunnies because real giant bunnies are attractive. Well, the chocolate ones aren't animated. But the, the outside's animated. <laughs> You're going to put some sort moving. of picture on there that's like some fake bunny. And once it's a fake bunny, I know that I shouldn't be interested. It's like how we're reading about all that real ale out there and all that, like the real... UK has a big thing with things being real. These are real chips. These is, this is real ale. Like, dude, everything is real except for the bunnies that I don't like. This is real good. Mm. I love little places like that. It's they've 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 nailed down. They're good at something. They've done it cheap. They've done it well. The people in the neighborhood love it, and it's like there's no fluff. There's no extra things going on. They just do what they do amazingly. Mm -hmm. Like those are the places that I want to find when we travel. Like a hundred percent of the time, we've got the place like Tim Ho Wan's in Hong Kong. We've got a place in Tokyo that makes the best onigiri in the world. That's what they do. They're amazing. It's cheap. It's awesome. Like <laughs> these little stands that aren't like worried about appearances and they're not worried about all the other little things that come along with like certain types of establishments. They just do what they do perfectly. I love stuff like that. It's not diffuse. They're just making and killer cakes mm -hmm. like if anybody ever recommends us things to go see and do it's that type of thing that i'm like really really hoping to yep. find like that's a that's a gem something interesting that katie found was this 
and it is a circle of stones. It's kind of out in the boonies a little bit, but not really, because we're really not that far away from Aberdeen right now. And we don't really know what it is, but it's kind of got like a Stonehenge vibe. Like things aren't stacked up exactly, but it's like a circular area where they've got these old rocks. And it looks like it was like, maybe like some sort of like old school, like ritual place or something. I have no idea what I'm talking about, but that's what it feels like. And to get here, we just had to go down some little back roads, like dirt road things, and then hike like five minutes up off the road. And we came into this big pasture where there's clearly been cheap because of all the poo we had to dodge. And then there's rocks. And apparently there's not only just one of these sites. They're all over the place up here. That's pretty fascinating that this is all still here and isn't like being turned into a big tourist thing. It's just in some sheep field. All the public areas and little parks, there's always a way for you to get in and there's always like a little structure so that things can't get out or in. I'm not sure if you're supposed to, what, what, if it's keeping you in or out, I'm not sure. But this is one I've never seen before. It's like a carousel of metal. You gotta, you gotta get everybody in. Am I coming in too? Yep. And you gotta turn it back the other way. It's a lot easier on the middle. And now you're in, and you can't get out. <laughs> We've come a little further out into the city, about 30 minutes, looking for another set of these stone circles. And we're now just kind of walking around these walking paths where it seems like people just come to walk their dogs and stuff. And they're supposed to be out here somewhere, but it's a bit of a maze. I feel like I'm in the Lost Woods or something. Like, yeah, it's definitely a maze. It doesn't seem like that. Uh, doesn't seem like that they have uh, established this specifically for those stones. So I don't know if we're gonna find it. Like there's another path there, and it's kind of a mystery at this point. We were just following some Scotty dogs for a good 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there were a couple of little Scotty dogs with these ladies, and we were like, oh, let's follow the Scotty dogs. They know where it is. I don't think they know where it is. <laughs> they don't really care where it is. <laughs> yeah, those Scotty dogs are looking for other things to pee on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're like legitimately now lost in the forest, like seriously. And um, we don't have our phones because they didn't have data service. So we were just like, oh, we don't need them. But maybe they would help us somehow. <laughs> um, and we've also lost the Scotty dogs, which was really our only hope. We don't know what direction they went. And uh, I don't know, maybe we're gonna die. <laughs> The good news is we found the car. The bad news is we didn't find these specific stones. The good news is we found the car. <laughs> I, I I had turned off. I was fucking done. I was in, you can, you can look at footage. I'm in the background. I'm just like, this is some fucking stupid <laughs> shit. I, I just have all curse words for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> I said no tangible sentences other than a, obscenities in so my head. We came back down to the car park where like there's literally a car park here, which is makes you think it would be easier to have found than the ones that we found earlier where there was no car park it was just like a dirt road there's a sign that there's says a sign here there. that says they're here but we asked a dude that looks like he comes here all the time because he runs a dog walking service and here's here with a bunch of dogs dog walking and i was like hey do you know about these stone circles and he said a lot of things that i, I didn't quite understand but part of it was there aren't any around here that i know about but something about his uncle's farm and a finger went across the hill and it was that direction. But I don't think him and I are talking about the same things. Uh, the accent here can be a little bit strange though. So yeah. it can be hard to de decipher periodically. So maybe I just didn't understand, but we can't find these stones, I don't think. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I'm happy that I'm not spending the night in the woods. <laughs> Seriously, this weekend is Easter. And we had that cake this morning that tasted like the Easter candy that just was really strangely coincidental. And now we finally come to the actual parking spot for the stone circle that we were looking for. And it's Easter Aqua Horhees. Horthies. I can't pronounce that. But more Easter. And I guess that this is just Easter of where you got lost in the woods. Just a little <laughs> bit Easter of that. <laughs> so it makes it makes sense that they would have given that like a greater than, less than situation, a Wester or Easter than situation. Yeah, so uh, let's go find some rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Are you grumpy? I'm really grumpy. <laughs> but this rock, this rock is pretty impressive already. Look at him. The sheep field here is like extremely picturesque. You couldn't have designed a better field for some sheep. It looks like somebody painted them or put them in digitally or something. Maybe I did. All right, so we found the stones. They were about a kilometer away from where we were wandering around the woods. So I don't know if there's more stones over there because there is a sign over there, but this one is way more established as like a place to check out. And it is quite nice and it looks like really impressive even compared to the ones that we saw earlier, which was cool, but wasn't like a place to go. It was just a place we found. And this one has got a plaque on the side of it that explains what this all is, sort of. They think it's between four and 5,000 years old and that it was probably used for like a lunar observation type of thing. And um, it, what it has is it's got 11 stones that go around the edge that make a circle. And then these back here behind me have got a recumbent stone leaning against them. And this is like where like lunar stuff could have happened. They also have a theory that maybe this is like supposed to look kind of like a tomb. They don't think it's a tomb, but like maybe it's supposed to like reflect what a tomb would be some sort of symbolic thing. But again, like four or 5,000 years ago, they just don't, they just don't, they just don't know. They just got a lot of guesses, but <laughs> it's still really cool. It's not like, we've never been to Stonehenge. We didn't get to hit that on our, our trip here, but it's got that vibe a little bit where you've got this, this th these big stones. Like what, 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 why is this here? And why did people 5,000 years ago think this was important? It's really fascinating. I like thinking about those things. Today our main goal was to come up to the northern coast of the shelf, kind of, there's like a shelf in the middle of Scotland. And we've come there uh, to have Cullen Skink. And I'll get to that in a moment, but as I was just wandering around the map one day, I saw Cullen on the map and I thought, huh, that sounds familiar, and it reminded me of the Cullen Skink, and then we found out it's actually the home of the Cullen Skink. And the restaurant that we're at holds the record for the best Cullen Skink, like, is awarded with that. So, many people had said, if you're coming to Scotland, you should try that dish. So, why not come to the town that is the maker of it, and also the award-winning restaurant within that town? As we're coming up here today, we hit Cullen, and I really thought that it was gonna be like a humdrum town just on the, on the water. We're famous for this fish soup, because we don't have anything else, but it's a really cute looking town. We were just jaw dropped. There's cliffs, there's coast, there's trains going through that you get to drive underneath them, and big archways underneath those trains, and uh, a little village that's right off the side of the main road. I can see it being a tourist destination, and we're currently at a hotel, and that's the people who make the best Cullen Skink. And so I think this is probably the place that people who like fish come. Like me. <laughs> Um, so we ordered the, the Cullen, actually we came into the restaurant and the lady was like, we can't make any food right now. And it was pretty heartbroken because today's not going to work out where we could just come back for dinner. Like that was not the plan where we came to this town to kind of see the town a little bit, get a, get a bite to eat. And then we're heading back down to Aberdeen. Um, so kind of was standing there. She was like, I could rustle you up some soup. I was like, that's why I came. <laughs> That's the only reason that I came here. <laughs> and so she brought me out the soup and the soup looks lovely and it smells incredible. Eric says that it smells bad, but it smells like, it smells like it would kill Eric. It would definitely <laughs> just kill you. And, and what's weird is like what I smell doesn't smell like fish. It smells like pepperiness and it, 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 an exotic pepper. It's not the worst thing I've ever smelled, but it's, I just can't take the fishiness to it. Mm. But it doesn't smell horrible it just smells like fish so it's just something i just don't like that smell bread is really hard i also got the the oat cake which is very scottish and iron brew now makes water <laughs> so <laughs> the girl brought me my stuff i was like it's getting real sweet or swedish it's getting real scottish up in here okay i'm just gonna get to it because i have been excited about this I thought about having this like the first week that we were here, but uh, we just didn't end up doing it. And I'm really glad that I found out that this city exists. It's pretty thick. It looks like a stew or something. Chowder. Chowder. Yeah, Chowder. Right. 
on the chowder scale, that's pretty darn good. I want to find a piece of fish. I see a good amount of uh, potatoes going on in there. I guess the fish is blended in pretty, pretty good because I can't find a piece of it by itself. Maybe that's a piece. I think that's a piece of fish. What is it? Or an onion. Onion. Where's the fish? <laughs> Does it taste fishy at all? Not like a clam chowder would. Like when you have clam chowder, you're like, whoa, that's clam. It, it just tastes like a chowder. It, it tastes really good. I'm a bit disappointed that there aren't larger pieces of fish in it. Like I wish, you know, you, that's what you came for. I want to taste that skink. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> yeah, I, thought you yeah, I heard an A, not an I. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Got a little bit there. It's really small bits. But I guess when you know when you put something and you cook it for a long time, things break up. Mm -hmm. So you can't be that upset. I'm going to eat like six potatoes though. Worth the hour and a half? It was an hour and a half drive up here. We stopped obviously along to see some circles and get grumpy. Um, was it worth it? For the shock that we had of the town, yes. Mm. For this dish, a medium on that because I do think that it's really, really good. But it, since I have a little bit of disappointment already, kind of teeter down that road of no, but you still have to think about the caliber of what you're eating. And I think it's quite good. It comes with a little hard bread, so I'm going to do some dipping now. If I can. There we go. It's like a hush puppy. All right. She told me you should try this. Well, I should try it. She's right. I got a potato. I got a potato. I think it's hard to make a scoop without a potato, to be completely real. Um, again, it smells... When, when I said it smells bad, that's not fair. It just smells fishy, and I don't like fishy smells. Um, but I can smell what you're talking about with that peppery stuff and everything. And it, it smells like it's well-made, etc., etc. Uh... It's pretty good. Um, if it didn't have the fish in it, it would be amazing. But just that that undertone, the fishy undertone that's sitting there. I just can't hang with it. It's a me thing, not a this dish thing. I think I might have some of your scone there. Or your, what is your hush puppy? <laughs> yeah. Seriously, what is up with Scottish playgrounds being amazing? Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to barf up some of this skink, so uh, I want to show you what I just found. You have to hold it for me. I have to hold it? Okay. Yeah. Alright. What is the goal here? Spinning. It's gonna think, spin? Yeah, I think I have to... Whoa! <laughs> Hold on, let me get you going. Oh, are you get it? You're in the middle now. You got it. Kinda. Watch your head, though, dude. Uh, this is difficult. It's not made okay. for big people. It's made for me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was gonna be way cooler than that, cause I mean, like, whoa, look at that. But it just is really jerky. I'm gonna try the same thing, but I'm gonna sit. This is amazing. I feel like I'm going to space. Over <laughs> It's not great. It's not, it's not, not great. It, it looks like it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm not using it right. <laughs> Glad I don't got a belly full of skink. <laughs> Hurt my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just learned something about you. Yeah. This is amazing. How did you get your legs up? 
Gotta go fast. I don't think you can do me. We came and found one more of the stone circles on our way back to Aberdeen today. And this one is a little bit different looking because there's a big bed of rocks that is in the middle of the circle of the larger rocks. But other than that, it's fairly similar in the sense that there's like well-spaced large rocks booing in a big circle and then a big stone that's leaning up against two of the other rocks and they're holding it up. In this case, the big stone is split into two pieces and I think that it's like that because of uh, frost buildup had like fractured the rock and split it into two larger chunks. Um, the sign that's here says that the, the big rock actually weighs like 12 tons and that it is actually made of a different material than the other rocks that are around here. So I guess it had to have been ported in or something which is a fairly impressive feat to be honest. And this one is also a bit unique because you've got the normal ring that was at the other two places that we visited, but next to this one is another ring that is actually from the Bronze Age. So it's like significantly newer than this stone ring and the other two stone rings that we found. And it, it appears that there was a burial site that was from the Bronze Age. So this has been used by a lot of different people for different types of purposes over a very, very long time four to five thousand years. It's such a big number, it's hard to comprehend. <laughs> Something else of note that I just read on the sign is that uh, one of the pillar rocks that holds up the middle leaning rock has got some cups that are carved into it. And I'm gonna try to show this. It's kind of difficult um, here. So you can see how my hand is going into that. That's like been carved out by somebody like way, way back in the day. And there's another one here. And there's some interesting areas that look like maybe they were carved, like the shape of that is kind of circular in a weird way. And then on the other side of it as well, I saw some things that were like this, like carved in a way that doesn't maybe quite look natural, but um, I think it's a pretty safe bet that the way that this thing is sitting and everything, that these were carved by a person, which they don't know what it's for. They call it cups. And uh, <laughs> this is a big of a mystery to everybody else as it is to me, I guess. We're actually on our way to the airport and this is one of the last things we're doing while we're in the United Kingdom. And it has to do with the giantest ponies I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. So like Scotland has got the littlest ponies and, and they the also biggest. have the biggest ponies. Yeah. <laughs> These things are 26 meters tall and we saw them from the highway, we were like, those are big ponies, and we were impressed. And then we came over to them, and there's actually a river that runs between them with a lock system for some boats. So, like, these ponies are, like, aquatic in a sense. Yeah. So, Ooh, and we were wondering what the Kelpies meant. Yeah, and it's called the Kelpies. We thought that it was a, an aquatic name, but yeah. we didn't know what it meant. So we think uh, we think the ponies are called the Kelpies? Is that? Yeah, yeah. Or we keep seeing signs for that. For the Kelpies, and That yeah. sounds aqu aquatic to us, and kind of, it is kind of aquatic. Yeah. Walking up to these is unreal. <laughs> it, it, you just, you kind of stop for a second, and you look at it, and you're like, I know that that's a pony, but they're not that big. <laughs> it's really, really cool. It's almost, it's not Mount, Mount Rush, Rushmore-esque, but it's definitely pretty darn cool. And it's cool. It's stuff. cool how close you can get to them. Yeah. Apparently, there's also tours of them, which would be rad, but we don't have time. We got airplanes. Yeah, airplanes. <laughs> All right, Scotland and the United Kingdom, essentially. We're in the airport now, and we're headed to Italy right now, and we don't really have any idea what we're gonna do except land in Venice. So we I do, know what we're we, gonna do we before place we to leave. Stay. Yeah, we have a place to stay there, and you know what we're gonna do before we leave here. So we're gonna drink some Scottish whiskey, also um, known as Scotch. Um, so before we went to the Kelpies today, which you saw those amazing horses, um, we went to the Glen Turret Distillery. But we realized when we got there, we don't have time to take your tour. So we just basically went in and bought some. We saw their giant. We have a giant. They have a giant grooser. Is that the word? What's the bird Gruce, called? Grooser. Grooser. Like the famous yeah. grooser. The grooser. Uh, so we saw bird. the giant bird, and we just we didn't have time to do the fun stuff that's there. And yeah. with Eric driving, we can't really have the fun stuff that's there. Or he can't. I could. But I'm not driving anymore um, so and, and the pilot's not here so it's okay um, now I'm quite excited that we both get to try the whiskey uh, Glen Turrent is known as the oldest whiskey distillery in Scotland, Scotland. and it's cool because 17... it's way back in the middle of nowhere and 1775. They said that it hasn't always been legal here, so it was kind of like Making a moonshine thing. Is. So they hid it like way back in the hills, 
and you got to drive way back down these roads and stuff to get to the place and then you see the giant groose and then you see the factory and i kind of wish we had had a chance to give a tour i agree but, because i saw that a lot of people seemed pretty pleased with it yeah. and i mean you're going to taste some whiskey at the end so everybody's all hyped up on whiskey <laughs> fever so I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody's just having a good time because they're excited about the whiskey and then they just had the is whiskey is this the first time we've had scotch whiskey in scotland i think it might be it is right. yes i no, it's not because we had some when we were at the castle in edinburgh we had oh yeah, tiniest, little tiny, 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 tiny ones. All right, to Scotland? To Scotland. You're a monster. <laughs> Just pounded that back. Look, I got like half mine. <laughs> it is uh, Scotch whiskey. It's like, really smooth. Yeah, Holy it's not crap. it's not hard, not difficult it's, to drink. It's almost like effervescent. And it's like 50% or something like that. 40. Yeah, it's quite strong. 40. 40 percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could enjoy this. I kind of wish I had an ice cube in it or something. Are you allowed to do that? Is that a thing you can do? Mm. Yeah? Yeah, that'd be all right, right? Scotch on the rocks, do, that's boy. That's what they do with bourbon and stuff. They put ice cubes in it. Yeah, I could get down on that. Bourbon is just whiskey from <laughs> Kentucky. <laughs> we, had to, we had to learn a little bit. I don't uh, think we learned a lot, but we learned a little bit. So, Scotland, what do you think? It's a mixed bag for overall. I saw some incredible things, seeing it's things I've never seen anywhere else. And the beauty here is ridiculous. I know you're going to ask me, like, what was the, the your favorite thing that you saw, and it's still those yellow dunes. Climbing up them, standing there, feeling when the wind. We, when we climbed that mountain. Oh shit, forgot about the mountain. Yeah, when we climbed oh. the mountain, that was amazing. And I think the Isle of Skye would be some place that a lot of people should go. Maybe not the season we went. It was very beautiful, but I think that it probably it's shines. It's a little boring because it, it was just driving. Yeah, and it was because we rained a bunch, a, bit, a bunch on us, and yeah. it was soggy, so we didn't get out and hike around a whole bunch. Mm. But I mean, if you come to Scotland, get a car. Get a car. Get the full insurance. Get the get the full insurance. Drive around the northern part of the country. Just go drive. That is the, that's the thing to do here, like straight up. And uh, I mean, the cities are okay but they don't stand out against places like Ooh. London or Tokyo or like these big cities that we're then, used to. And then they're, they're, if you go outside of the cities, you're just, it will drown the cities in just what yeah, you're it's saturated so with ama amazing things to look at. And there's places that are way more remote than where we went. You can take ferries and stuff to get to oh, little yeah. islands and I stuff. About we that. looked into it, it was too expensive, too expensive to do. Expensive. But yeah, I mean, it was absolutely incredible up there. And even in this time of year where it was kind of cold and everything was kind of gray and stuff, it still looked amazing driving along the, along the coast and seeing the landscape change over and over. Mm -hmm. Just an amazing place. And in general, we're leaving the United Kingdom now and we've been here for not quite three months, just under three months. And we hadn't planned to come here at all when we came, like it originally planned to come to Europe. And on retrospect, I'm glad we came. Like the, the whole experience in the United Kingdom in general has been awesome. Going over to the Isle of Man was really awesome. I need some real talk. I need some real talk. Okay. Some of that real talk is, are we bored? A little bit bored. We're a little bit bored. Yeah. But, because I don't want people to watch this and be like, oh, the United Kingdom is going to be amazing. It can be incredible. There are things that you would never even imagine. There are foods that you can't imagine you'd be tasting in an English-speaking environment that are just delicious and easy to get to because they're in a market where so many people are serving delicious food. And then there's things you're going to see on the coast that you would never see anywhere else. And you're going to sleep in a freaking castle. Yeah. These are amazing things. But then there's going to be that there's not a diversity of food that... Yeah, I have at least gotten kind of just bored of the standard food, which is yeah. really good in cities because you have access to lots and lots of different diversity and stuff. But, but we've eaten I mean, at the co-op enough. Yeah, we've eaten at the co-op enough. Like and I've driven in a car enough. Yeah, like, I'm ready for a break on that I, too. I love driving, but mm -hmm. I wasn't doing any driving. I'm just sitting in the But for the past 13 the days, seat. we've been in a car straight yes, up. Yes, every single um, day. I, there's only been one day I wasn't in a car. And to be fair, like when we traveled around say, Southeast Asia like almost 10 years ago now, we were there for quite a while after six or seven months we were bored too yeah you know so what i mean so we, you, you get bored and you get excited about going to new places and right now we're about to get on a plane to italy and i'm excited about you it. you know what yeah that should have been my question are you excited about the next step but yeah i'm always time, excited about the next step <laughs> i think there's value in being honest about where where the line is of where excitement dwindles a little bit so i'd say two months in the uk and you'll probably be going I want to see something different. Even though we've been here for that long, we still didn't even see the southern half, like anything south of London. We didn't go to, go to Wales. Wales. We didn't go to, go to Northern Wales. Ireland. We had planned to maybe even try to hit Ireland. We didn't do that either. So I'm sure we're going to be back in the region. Yeah, yeah, Like, totally. without a doubt. But for now, it's time for Italy. And more whiskey? <laughs> Italian whiskey? It's called wine, son. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you remember like, an, like oh gosh, that was 
five hours ago when we were so excited about going somewhere new. <laughs> well, we're still in Scotland. Um, and it's gonna be a week, y'all. And it's gonna be a week before we can get back out of here. Um, we were really, really excited. Drinking our whiskey, having a good time, and now we are still here. Basically what happened is that um, we were flying Ryanair, which is like notoriously the one of the worst airlines you can fly. And um, the reason is because there's all these like hidden fees and like little like mysteries you have to unpackage when you buy your tickets. And one of the mysteries that you have to unpackage when you buy your ticket here. When you're here, American. When you're, no, when you're non-EU citizen because those dudes were from okay. India and they okay. were having the same problem. Non-EU. Non-EU citizens is that, um, actually I'll, I'll turn around. So behind me is the place where you drop off your bag and it's got a computerized system and you scan this ticket that you have to print on your own because you're traveling and you have a printer but i managed to find a printer and i printed out my ticket because they won't use the digital one and um you scan your ticket and we had a bag to check so we gave our bag to a lady there and everything was peachy and we were like okay so we went and we went through security and you have to scan your ticket to go through security and then we went and we like did the video and all that stuff that we shot and then we went up to the get on the plane and the plane was running late and there was this huge line and there was this guy coming through the line and he was like checking people's bags and if your bag was too big he was putting the sticker on your bag so you could like pseudo check it or something because they don't want it inside the cabin i don't know exactly what that was all about so there's all this communication going on and then you get all the way up to the dude that is going to let you get on the plane and the first thing he says he sees the passport in my hand and he's like did you get your visa stamp not your visa stamp your ryan air stamp is yeah, it, it's a visa check visa check stamp i guess is what he called it and we were like no what is that and he's like flips over our paper and like there's this tiny little print on, on our ticket it's like make sure you do this thing like <laughs> and we didn't do this thing so we ran he was like we i was like what do, what do we have to do to fix this and he was like you have to go back out to the very beginning here where you check your bag and there's a girl at a window and this girl at the window it has to give you a stamp on this piece of paper like okay but the plane is leaving in like 10 minutes and he was like yep you better hurry up so we ran and we ran and we ran and we ran and we got to the line and there was another panic girl and then another there were two panic girls yep. that were in the same exact situation and um this this lady was like frustrated and she like typed in katie's information and filled it all out and then gave you a paper stamp yeah you it gave I you a piece a of paper pass. and I then she just pass. she just looked at mine and stamped it with this rubber stamp and said go so like, I got nothing except for a lady to frustratedly stamp a piece of paper. Like, it, there was nothing in computer system, nothing happened. She just frustratingly stamped a piece of paper. And then we ran back up and we had to go through security again. So we ran through security and like the people at security here were awesome. And they pushed us through as fast as they could. Big thing that I want to say, Edinburgh. Your, your airport, airport is, is amazing. Except for this, this little situation. But you know what? I found out that Ryanair doesn't exist in here really. Like, yeah. It, they don't want them here, so they don't let them stay. So we actually would end up, <laughs> we end up having, the whole time we're running through, people are like, oh, you need the Ryan stamp. You need the Ryan stamp. That's what all the employees reference this as. And they, they knew what was happening. So we got went up to where the airplane was, and he was like, it's gone. So we were like, okay, what do we do now? And he was like, this surprises me. They were like, we'll give you a free, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna rebook your flight for free. Okay. So I'm not that angry at this point. So we, they were like, you have to go out to Swiss Air or something like that and like talk to these ladies at this booth who are done with dealing with this problem. Like they just, they're just robotic and they just, they, I mean, I don't blame them because I can confirm this happened to eight people today. And that's what I can confirm because I talked to the people, but I guarantee, like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a hundred people a day that this is happening to in this airport. This, Cause I mean, they have a lot of flights, dude. Like. And yeah. we asked when we went down to the desk. So yeah, to, to rebook it. Uh, when we had to rebook it, we were like, when can we get on the next flight? And she, today is Wednesday. And she was like, the next flight is, we have two available seats on Monday. <laughs> so like, uh, it's Wednesday, y'all. So we ended up actually getting a flight for next Wednesday. We are seven days delayed because we didn't read the tiny little print and the person who took our bag didn't tell us, and the person who checked our uh, ticket when we went into security didn't tell us, and the people that checked your bag in that line to take it to check it when we were up in I, front of the I plane, they didn't tell us. I my ticket to someone. Nobody said a damn thing. And, and when you, we, we got kind of upset with them, not super upset, but like frustrated. And we were like, why didn't anybody tell us? And they're just like, it's not our responsibility. Like, that's what they tell you. 
And, and when you we talk, when we talk, it's service. It's, a <laughs> it's insane. Service industry. It's insane. That, and it's not just us. If it was just us, I'd be like, okay, we screwed up. But it was just a stream of people, and you there keep were seeing four people with people Ameri on our flight with American alone. passports running back and forth while we're standing because they're dealing with the situation. It's insane. They tell you at the last possible moment, and I would think they were just trying to fleece us to get more money. But they're not charging us more. They're just they're losing money here. What the hell yeah. are they doing? Like they're giving away two seats. They're giving on away two, two different seats. Planes. Yeah, it's insane. What are they doing? It's just stupid. So like. Well, and then, why, so when we talked to the stamp not be provided at the window. Yeah, why couldn't they just do it at the window? Because uh, she didn't do anything on the computer. She stamped a paper. She had a rubber stamp. That's all. It's insane. And it, uh, what the other thing that really bothers <laughs> me is like we went into the past security and everything, and we had about ten pounds. And we went on a shopping spree, and we bought a whole bunch of drinks for the plane, and we were just yeah, excited. just to, just to kill the last five pounds. And we had. we had to run, we had to go outside of security, and then when we went back into security, we couldn't take we our drinks and everything, and throw all that away. stuff away. So it was just ten pounds of garbage. <laughs> This is crazy that this is like this. So now we're trying to hopefully get our non-refundable hotel back that we were, had booked in Venice. It was hundreds of dollars. And because we're not going to be able to be there. It's the whole time that we, that we had it booked. It's gone. And now we're scrambling to find some place to stay at night. It's like 9.30 at something now. So we booked kind of an expensive hotel here in Edinburgh for one day. And hopefully we'll be able to come up with a cheaper Airbnb for the rest of the time that we're going to be here that we hadn't planned on being here. It's all just bananas. It's really bananas. We were going to just take off next week. She wasn't going to do any, she didn't have to work for her company. We were just going to just chill. And we were going to do it in Italy and just chill. And now we're going to be just chilling in Venice. Our anniversary is in like two days <laughs> and we're stuck here. I mean, there's way, way, way worse places to be and way worse situations to be in. But it's, this is bullshit, y'all. <laughs> if you fly out of Edinburgh airport on it, Ryan Air, make sure you get that stamp. Don't we're skip gonna, the stamp. We're gonna put it down in the in the description of this. We're gonna put it <laughs> everywhere about this. Oh my god! Get that stamp, y'all. All I want to do is cry. That's yeah. all I want to do. You're cracking. I I'm I. One of the cracked. other the other girl that we hung out with was really cool. This girl Sarah, like that we got boned on this as well. Same exact situation. She is going to Italy to shoot somebody's like like uh, photography to shoot somebody's um, engagement proposal. or proposal or something, and she's not gonna make it. <laughs> it's gonna, it ha it's, she's not gonna make it. There's no flights. So, <sighs> let's get some scotch. <laughs> it's in my bag. <laughs> this might be a familiar background. <laughs> we sat here one week ago, almost to the moment, and um, made a video about how we were on our way to Italy. And then we showed a video that probably explained that we didn't make it because of some things with the airport and. Not the airport, the airline. The airline. Well, the, airport, the airport's a little bit to, f to be to be blamed, actually, because all the people are staff here. And no one is responsible. No, Eric. You yeah, can't that's blame true. Them if that's not true. It's been. It, it, it was a pretty miserable situation, and even after all the it time we've is. had to like get calm about it and like think, okay, what could have gone better? It really just comes down to that the policies that they have in place here are set up to just screw people and nobody cares and that has yeah, been a, that, that's been a depressing part yeah. about this like i'm sitting here and prior to starting our like trek to the airport today i was fine yeah and once i started feeling like i got into somebody else's zone where they get to control whether i go or don't go <laughs> I just, I've kind of gone into like a, a little coma and I feel sick to my stomach and I, I feel kind of like somebody's waiting to screw me over in, like, and I'm just waiting for the, the kick in the stomach. We, it was all about that little stamp that like, again, like, I don't know how well I explained this in the last video, but it did not matter. They don't, they don't check anything. They don't look in your passport. They don't do anything. They just put a stamp onto your boarding pass, not in your passport. This thing doesn't matter. There's no reason they couldn't be doing it anywhere, anywhere. And they don't do it when you board the plane. And they, they make won't. you, they won't. They yeah. just won't do it. And they, there's no reason not to. And as we were going up to the stand where you get this stamp, there was a girl standing right in front of Missing us. And she flight. said, and she said, I was just at the gate. Like it was, she was going through exactly what we went through. And the other seven people that I confirmed went through the night we went there. It's just a constant stream of people that are missing flights and getting their lives completely shook up because nobody here cares to be like, hey, you need to go have this checked. Thank goodness for us. Like it just, it really, 
it, it ruffled some, yeah. there, there were waves that had to be fixed, but other people had jobs and projects yeah. and things and vacations and moments in life that could be beautiful and then just ruining them. Yeah, and it's I, frustrating. I got real upset yesterday and I cried about it. Like not about this, just about people not caring. And people not wanting to help each other have the best moment that they can. When we dropped off our bag again today, the same way we did last time, one week ago, <laughs> the girl took our bag and she was totally fine today. This girl was really peachy and she was like, okay, now go up and go through security. And that's not what, that's not what you do. And she's I, wrong. Yeah. And she knows it. She, she knows that she's not right and about it. We explained like we have a Ryanair flight. We need to go over here and get the stamp. And she was like, I don't, I don't work for Ryanair. And then she just like, she's just like and, she, and she was like, well, you shouldn't give directions to people that are wrong. Cause that's what happened last time. The girl told us to go through security and we did what the girl said. And then we got all the way to the boarding thing and they were like, nope. And then we didn't get on our flight. So it's just this really bizarre little hole. And so anyway, we were here for an extra week and it was not, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Um, we actually ended up going to an Airbnb that had this- It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. It was kind of stupid. <laughs> yeah, this lady at this Airbnb that we stayed with here, it was our first horrible, horrible Airbnb experience. And it was horrible to the point where we left the Airbnb two days early. We just handed her the key and left. We had to get out of there. We were super uncomfortable. And then- She, she, she called us rude. She basically because we asked told her, me I was ungrateful. And um, because she, she, just, she, she turned the heat off in the house to try to freeze heat. us out and then turned off the internet so that we couldn't okay. use the internet. And it, it was insane. Like, I don't, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole very deep, but it was crazy. And Airbnb actually stepped up and we contacted them and like explained the whole situation because we don't want people to be able to stay with this lady. It's not okay. No. People, you shouldn't be staying with this lady. She's crazy. So we contacted Airbnb and we were like, hey, we just want you guys to know that this is not an okay thing. Like, you got you to investigate this. And they actually kicked us back some money for which was shocking, um, which was shocking. We, we didn't expect we know it that that's not a refund is not something that we but should get in Air, this situation airbnb stepped up and helped us out a lot even though it really wasn't their fault that this lady is nuts and, and they're the still other checking into her the so other yeah they're still looking they, into that they either 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 they get her to realize the way that you need to behave for airbnb or they just tell her she can't have they yeah. shouldn't be allowed to host yeah. there were no trash cans <laughs> like it was the, the, the shower was like broken and falling apart. It was that insane. That was the least of it. Like, <laughs> yeah, in our room, it was six, us out. It was 16 degrees in our room, like Celsius, when we left, which is like, I like 65 or something like that. It was cold, like it was freezing. It, it was insane. And like she told us we were rude for emailing her, like, can we turn the heat on? She was like, that's really rude of you. Like, what? Okay. Anyway. I don't, I don't know if you can tell from my like behavior. I'm just <laughs> He's not kinda, happy done with it. I'm done. So. Um, and then we ended up finding a hotel and the people at the hotel were wonderful, except for the showers didn't have hot water 50% of the time. So no, we've, no, we've no. had every single time every I took shower, a shower, it was, cold. it was never working. Yeah. 50%. You had to bathe me with the hot water kettle. <laughs> yeah. We had to use the kettle to, to, to pour hot water on her to get the soap and, off of and her. And now I have to email someone to get my money back. It's true. The hoops I have to jump through, it is just stupid. It, it's been a very, very, we haven't explained all of the bad, like bad things that have happened to us over the past couple of weeks, but it has been a constant stream of difficulty and a stream of people being very negative and just not caring. And the number of times that we've heard the phrase, that's not my responsibility from people that work in customer service has been astonishing. And it's just been something that's been hitting us over and over and over since we've been in Scotland. So like as beautiful yeah, as the never country happened is, in England. never, never have I ever had a situation where I've been this stressed about just like being in a place like this. We've been in some hard places. We've, we've been in places where I was like almost dying from sicknesses. We've been in India and India is hard, but this never before have I been this stressed. When we were in Karita and uh, the gang of people surrounded the van that we were in sitting in, Indonesia. in and just started yelling at us like, give us our money give us our money yeah. and I remembered they took us to the hotel and I sat in the room by myself because I, I don't remember where you went but I sat in the room I took a shower and I just was scared yeah I thought oh they're gonna come they want their money they know where I am it was just a scam I, I was so worried and I feel a similar thing right now but you know what I, I just I don't know where it's coming from <laughs> It's coming from somebody who just doesn't care and it's not their responsibility. I'm sorry if this comes off very negative, but we have been like turbo stressed and um 
But we did have a couple of good days while we were here during the week. We on our anniversary went and saw, saw a movie. We saw two movies actually, two Wes Anderson films. It was amazing. Mm. And we just had a good time together and that was great. But the rest of the time we were here for this week, it just rained and then it started snowing today. So when we were walking to the bus, it was snowing. And I'm like, oh God, are we going to miss the plane? I don't know. And we still don't know. But I don't think the, the snow is going to cause a so problem. Far, it's not so far it says on time. Accumulating and everything but says on time. But if we're doing repeats. <laughs> we're going to do another <laughs> bottle of tiny scotch. Yeah. And this is the Glenlivet. Okay. Um, Open it up. Let's do Glen, it. Glenlivet, is, I've heard that, that phrase before. Um, but... I don't know. It's just an old scotch maker. We don't have a cup this time, so Katie's pouring it in a teeny tiny little lid. Look at that. Lid. Okay. Yeah. What are we going to cheers to here? To hope. To hope. All right. Dink. Ooh. That one just evaporates when it hits your lips. Yeah. What percentage is that? Is this 49 Same. or something? Woo. I don't think it's a smooth flowing one. It says smooth flowing. I think I need to smooth flow some more of that into my gullet at the moment. To be honest with you. Yeah, Eric was like, I could use a calm down. <laughs> um, this little video, I think, has now gone at eight minutes. It's been a little longer than I anticipated. Yeah. I hope people understand that we aren't the type of people that just like completely complain about things all the time. And we have talked about like whether or not we really wanted how deep we wanted to go into this, and we're not going super deep into stuff. But um, I think it's fair to just explain what's been going on, so that there's a proper picture being painted. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to say everything is always peachy because this last couple of weeks has been hard. It's been some of the hardest we've ever had to deal with. It really has, and it's just been one thing after another. And I don't know if it's our luck or, man, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what's up, but. I'm really hoping that when we get to Italy, hopefully in a couple of hours, our luck changes. Um, yeah. Oh, I want to give a shout out to the people in Italy. We had a non-refundable hotel when we were we were going down to Italy through Booking.com. We don't get yeah. paid by Booking.com, by the way. It's just a, <laughs> just just explaining. So um, you can get a non-refundable hotel. And we had it for the whole week, which would have been the ending today. So we missed the whole thing because of the flight that we had to wait a week for. And like we contacted the manager of the hotel, and they were like, "We understand your circumstances," and they refunded us. So and we had some very good luck there, but I have a feeling maybe, I don't know. I think it's, I, I'm just, I'm just saying like that really wasn't their responsibility and they hooked us up because like they saw a hard situation and helped us and that was like super, super appreciated. Yeah. So that to me, that to me gives hope for our next destination. Hmm. Onward. Yep. Hopefully. <laughs> What's the name of the town again? Port Augustus. This is what it's like on the moon. You never touch the ground. <laughs> you can't touch? I touched it. You gotta turn your head sideways, Katie. Oh no. <laughs> I try it every time and it hurts. <laughs> we want to thank everyone for coming along on our adventure in the UK. We have linked a playlist of all of our UK videos below in case you missed any. If you're new to our channel, we'll hope you'll enjoy our adventures in other parts of the world too. Next up is Venice, then wonderful Croatia, followed by Greece, and then videos from our home in Japan. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything.